I don't normally like to be very technical because I think that can put people off cooking. But I thought it might be nice just to explain to you what sort of meat you're likely to use when you're making a casserole. Casserole meat usually comes from the forequarter of the animal and the forequarter is in fact the part of the animal that pulls the other half along and it really has to work harder. And because it has to work harder, it develops something called connective tissue and muscle and that makes the meat tougher. But that has lots of advantages, which I'll explain in a minute. But let's just have a look at the cuts. Um, through this area here, we've got chuck and blade. This is my favourite cut for casseroling when I want large chunks because it's nice and lean. And then here we've got neck and clod, and this is good for stewing, cutting up in small pieces, and things like steak and kidney pie. Now, if you live in different parts of the country to what I do, you'll probably find that this here is called shoulder, and this can be called all sorts of names like um, sticking, vein, and sloat, and all sorts of weird and wonderful names like that. Down here we've got shin, that's a very important cut, and also um, we've got some more of that, in fact, on the hind quarter as well, leg, which is a similar cut. Well, that's where they come from on the animal. Now I'd like to explain a little bit about what they look like when they're cut up, when you see them in the butchers. And I've got here the uh, blade and the chuck, shoulder, in other words. And um, I'd like to explain this muscle and connective tissue that I've already mentioned. Um, what happens with long, slow cooking is that this connective tissue here renders down and becomes a beautiful source and it sort of internally bastes the meat whilst it's cooking and this is what gives casseroles such a lovely flavour. In fact, casseroles develop as they cook. They get more and more flavour as they cook, which is interesting. So anyway, we'll move on now to the neck and clod and this is cut up in small pieces. This is the sort that you might use for steak and kidney pudding or pie. And also, this is the area of meat that's probably used for mincing, when you have minced beef. And this is shin of beef here, which I think is a beautiful cut. All that connective tissue cooks down to a beautiful sauce, and in fact, it has a beefier flavour than the best fillet steak. Well, that's the cuts of meat. Then, of course, you're going to need a casserole. And this is the casserole that I would recommend, a good all-round casserole for the family. Now, it's made of very heavy material. It's made of very heavy cast iron, which conducts the heat very evenly. And then it's lined inside with um, enamel. And that's a good size. And the advantage is that you can use it on top of the stove, or you can transfer it to the oven. And you can also, I think it's pretty enough to take to the table, so that's a good all-round family casserole. It's an investment, it costs a few pennies, but it will last you a lifetime and be very useful. So there's the casserole. Once you've got the meat and the casserole, then you can really have fun because there's no end to what you can do with spices and ingredients and flavours. You can make all sorts of things. But what I'd like to have a look at now is the sort of liquids that you can use because they can add a lot of character and flavour of their own. First of all, beef stock made with bones that we saw last week. And then next in the line there, pale ale. And that really does transform in about two hours cooking, two and a half hours. That develops into a beautiful flavoured sauce and permeates the whole kitchen. Next door to that, we've got stout. And again, that has similar qualities. I like to use slices of braising steak and lots of onions and chuck a bit of stout over. And really, at the end of long, slow cooking, that's as good as any rump steak, and you've only used braising steak. Here we've got red wine, very special, has all the right qualities, but is very expensive. And so what I like to do is keep handy in my kitchen some dry cider. And I emphasise dry because sweet cider is not the same for cooking. And also, I try to use a still cider, which I think is better than the fizzy stuff. And you'll be surprised at how good cider is for cooking and so much cheaper. And any recipe that you come across that asks for wine and you can't afford it, then take it from me. You can use dry cider and it'll taste every bit as good. Even that boeuf bourguignon that we saw at the beginning of the programme can be made with dry cider.